Hello, dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am a clinical oncologist practicing since 2010 in Russia. Uh, today we will discuss the alternative uh, medicine for uh, different um, integrative or alternative cancer protocols that is very popular among cancer patients. We will talk about dichloroacetate. Uh, what is uh, a unique mechanism of action? Why does it uh, why is it so popular among uh, oncological patients and uh, talk about uh, the pros and cons and the problems also. So, let's get started. Uh, this is the fresh article that explores the potential and controversies surrounding dichloroacetate uh, as a cancer treatment uh, focusing on its metabolic effects. Uh, so, and uh, about uh, current research gaps also. You can scan this QR code if you want, or just uh, find it by authors and title. So, uh, we know that normal cells use mitochondria uh, as the cell power plants to burn glucose uh, with, using, with oxygen, right? Producing, 66, uh, producing 36 molecules of ATP. It's an energy unit. So, this is very effective. Cancer cells, they cheat even with oxygen. They ferment glucose without mitochondria, making only 2 ATP instead of 36. That's why cancers, you heard this phrase that cancer loves sugar, right? So, it needs a lot of energy. That's why, because it's very energy ineffective, it will produce very few energy from every glucose. That means that it needs a lot of glucose. That's why they are talking about uh, metabolic approach, about keto diet, about all this stuff, metformin, um, all that is uh, aimed at uh, metabolic characteristics of the tumor. Um, the thing is, when the tumor uses this pathway, it also produces lactate. Uh, that gives you it, uh, the survival advantages and um, increased growth and resistance to death to immunity. Uh, we know that this uh, metabolic shift, the, the excess of lactate, gives it a, a lot of advantages. You can see here on the screen how much lactate does for the tumor. It enhances motility, increases the metastasizing potential, it improves the growth, uh, protects from uh, immune system, from apoptosis. So, it's a protective stuff. And uh, new approach is to struggle with this lactate. Uh, DCA, what does it do? It um, struggles with um, the enzyme PDK that um, can block the work of mitochondria in tumors. And uh, this blockage of this enzyme will um, reactivate mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation, meaning it wakes up mitochondria, forcing cancer cells to switch back to oxidative metabolism, to normal energy production, minimizing lactate production. So, this is very important to decrease this lactate in tumors and making it more vulnerable to our treatment options and to detection by immunity and killing by immunity. Uh, reactivated mitochondria, second mechanism, they produce reactive oxygen species, uh, free radicals that will damage cancer cells. Cytochrome C will be released, it will cause a self-destruction of tumor cells and uh, a reduction of lactate, we know how much it will do um, against the tumor, right? Uh, and the result is the cancer cells will die without harming normal cells, because normal cells, uh, it won't affect them much, because they already had all this uh, normal function of mitochondria. That means, because cancer cells rely on this uh, glycolysis and dysfunctional mitochondria, DCA exploits its weakness. Hooray! We found the cure for cancer, finally! Not so easy. Mechanism uh, looks very beautiful. The theory, the hypothesis is beautiful. But what is in the reality? Studies on mice showed that really DCA could help to reduce, for example, like lung metastasis in uh, breast cancer mice by 58%, and uh, normal cells were not affected, cell lines of tumors uh, 
um, showed also that breast cancer was very uh, well affected, glioblastoma or lung cancer, they were affected by DCA. But, uh, for example, pancreatic cancer, um, the response was weaker. All right, there are some uh, case reports of uh, real patients with cancer. For example, this 57-year-old uh, woman with metastatic colorectal cancer. Uh, oral DCA, uh, without any other drugs, without any chemotherapy, uh, showed uh, tumor stabilization for nearly four years without any significant toxicity. That is very unique because it's already stage four, it has a lot of metastases, and there it stays stable, it doesn't grow anymore. So that's very unusual. The other case was with medullary thyroid cancer, it's aggressive type of thyroid cancer, and the patient had a recurrence after all the treatment, uh, meaning the treatment is not working well, and uh, DCA combined with other metabolic methods, I talked about it in the separate playlist, on mito metabolic mitochondrial theory of cancer, uh, it uh, helped to uh, regress the tumor, so it decreased in size and symptoms improved, so uh, DCA may have a role in targeting even resistant cancers. This was uh, followed by some uh, clinical trials. Most are early stages. They were uh, trying to determine their doses. In conclusion, it must be like 15 to 25 milligrams per kilo uh, per day, but uh, all this dose must be divided into uh, two. For example, if the person is 70 kilo, he should take one and a half grams per day, but divided into two. That means uh, 0 0.75 grams uh, in the morning and the same in the evening. First time users uh, start usually from 8 milligrams per kilo twice a day. Somebody takes uh, uh, 10 milligrams per kilo per day for the first one to three weeks to assess the tolerance before increasing this. And in general, aggressive cancers may need up to 30 to 40 milligrams per kilo per day. It's high doses and it's quite dangerous without any medical supervision. How is it scheduled? Uh, for example, there are different uh, schedules, like five days on, two days off, or two weeks on, one week off. Maintenance uh, post-remission, uh, maybe six weeks on, and then six months off, in the minimal dose, like 10 milligrams per kilo per day, and then divide into two. But there are some limitations, for example, genetics. We know that DCA irreversibly inhibits enzyme with such a name that is critical in phenylalanine thyrosine uh, metabolism. This can accumulate toxic uh, substances like malleal acetoacetate. And if the human have some genetic uh, variants of, uh, of this gene, uh, it may decrease its activity and uh, the drug may be uh, more effective, uh, works stronger in these uh, uh, patients, causing uh, increased toxicity in smaller doses. But for most cases, uh, as we talked in the previous slide, uh, the doses were like that. You can pause and see more. Uh, this is one of the clinical trials determining the doses of dichloroacetate. What about toxicities? Uh, neurotoxicity is number one toxicity. It can cause uh, neur neural damage, it can cause numbness or tremors. And we know that um, if we add uh, vitamin B1, like benfotiamine, uh, 100 to 200 milligrams per day, plus uh, alpha lipoic acid from 2 to 500 milligrams per day, it can uh, help to decrease its toxicity. That means uh, protection of neural system is important. Also, it can cause uh, some uh, liver toxicity, usually it's mild, it can increase ALT or AST, that means uh, someone who takes this drug uh, need to monitor liver function. And uh, it sh most likely it should not be used alone, because alone it won't be uh, effective. Uh, again, the theory is beautiful, how it works, but tumors are very resistant, they are very surviving, highly surviving, the survival potential is very high, and they can accommodate to everything. That means uh, treatment of cancer is never about one method or one remedy. It must be always complex. Except toxicity, it has some problems. 
the problem is inconsistent anti-cancer efficacy maybe due to uh, tumor plasticity again all the tumors are different also we know that it affects this pdk enzyme that turns off mitochondria in tumor cells not all tumor cells have a very high activity of this this enzyme uh, that means uh, in that cancers um, uh, this drug will be um, not very effective and also we need high doses and uh, these high doses may cause neurotoxicity and we are still lacking the uh, clinical evidence of on its effectiveness we need bigger clinical trials we don't know much about its uh, interference uh, and uh, interactions with other drugs uh, what we know is uh, bortezomib it can decrease its efficacy but it can potentially work better with other metabolic things like for example metformin uh, and um, statins that are uh, metformin can block uh, AMPK and statins may inhibit MCT4 uh, pathways of the tumors and together they may potentially work better still need more information of course that means there is no single remedy for a cancer all the cancers are different some uh, some will be resistant to DCA some patients won't tolerate DCA that means uh, this is a potentially interesting uh, remedy in a complex treatment of uh, tumors but still we need more uh, data clinical data and i want to thank you for your time for sharing this video and uh, for your comments of course i want to thank ev everyone who supports this channel i wish you good luck good day god bless you and goodbye don't be afraid